YouTube. How are we? Welcome to today's video. It's the last video. We obviously went through the blood work. So as we know, now the next one, we're gonna talk about training and sort of start to give a bit of a glimpse of what we're working towards essentially. So obviously coming away from the shows, it was uh, obviously an amazing experience. It's open up, open up the doors to a, a potential other path. So my objective, as you would have seen from the show day vlog, was just nothing but just to kind of ex you know enjoy the day. My personal plans at that point was to maybe consider uh, a classic show in another federation, just so I could display my body of work as an amateur. And to which at that point, I would, I'd kind of make the decision in my head that I wouldn't pursue like competing anymore. Because for me, like coaching is always the priority. But now an interesting dimension that I never thought would really be available is opened. So as we look at it from a men's physique standpoint, obviously a very interesting place to be in. As you know, I did the, my pro debut shortly after. Absolutely spent as well, obviously no, no peak and things and managed to place fifth in my, essentially my pro debut, right? And uh, I was two points off of fourth. And I think I was maybe six or so off, off Josh, which is obviously amazing. And so now it's kind of like, okay, you know, where, where do we go from here? Have a little bit of a think, what are, the, what are my strong suits anyway? Um, and so kind of with that in mind, look at my classic cap, I've got about, I think it's like seven and a half kilos that I can now gain. And seven and a half kilos of muscle is, is gonna take some time, you know? So what do we do in between there? And it kind of makes sense to embrace that men's physique journey. And my legs are all good, you know, as you would have seen. And my split over the last sort of 12 to 18 months was very upper body dominant with very little lower work. And the, the legs kept up and they still developed. So you're kind of like, okay, if I was to, to do classic, my split would probably end up looking similar. I need more upper body, I need more arms. I need to be stronger through that front shot. And it correlates with men's physique as well. So it's kind of like two birds in one stone. But I think in terms of like a, a year plan, you know, it makes sense to, let's try and put on some muscle mass and let's see if we can be competitive in the men's physique pro space and sort of look to line things up for next year, which then acts as a nice way to obviously get lean again. And then we'll see maybe at that point, I'm like, okay, now maybe three to four kilos off my classic cap and start that transition and sort of create that storyline. So it's kind of a bit of a, an update with what the plan is as well, in terms of the, the competing side of things. I'm not gonna say we're going for the Olympia, because like I said, there's never any expectations, but could you bloody imagine that as well? <laughs> Jesus, anyway. So that's to give you a bit of a run through. So either way, the training split would probably have looked very similar. I think if maybe if it was like a commitment to, to classic, I would potentially have put a little bit more hamstring work in there. But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing that I need to work on, which is also a good thing. It's not like I'm taking away from one by focusing on the other. Um, so we will dive into the split and we will go through why the split looks how it is, because it's far from, I would say, optimal. Um, but I have to consider what my priorities are in my life as well. So for me, it's coaching and quality time. And so with that in mind, the training split itself is actually five days on and two days off. So some may be familiar with the bro split. So it's kind of like the bro split, which is absolutely fine. I'm still working out the total working sets, being assisted, having growth hormone in play. I'm confident that I'll be able to achieve progressive overload, rest and recover. I think the only sort of potential hurdles I'm gonna run into is maybe nervous system, and maybe just the more mental side of things of doing five days in a row, but I'm sure I'll adapt. And I'm, I'm gonna be training at a few different establishments which will kind of keep that motivation going instead of like the same drive five days in a row and that sort of thing, different kit. So we'll see, we've got to give it a go first. If I need to make any changes, I will. But the main reason why, so I have Wednesdays and Thursdays as my rest. And Sunday was gonna be a rest as well. So I was gonna do a four day split to which the Friday session, which is back knee, would have been upper. But Beth has decided that she needs to train on a Sunday with her commitments. So it actually enables me to get a Sunday session in as well, which is good. So without further ado, we'll run through it initially. So the split itself running from Monday to Sunday, we kick things off with back A, we're into push A, then rest, rest, back B, legs B, and push B. So obviously the five days in a row essentially start from Friday, which is obviously the back, legs, push, 
back and push. So the question is, how are we going to let, make this work? So just so it's more chronological based, I'm gonna say the split starts from Friday with the back B session. So we head on through to back B. Now, the thing we've got to consider with the back B session is I've obviously got legs the following day. So the benefit of that is the back session means that I'm not, I'm gonna keep everything seated, everything chest supported row. So that way I'm not going into the legs with any sort of fatigue in terms of anything that's gonna be, you know, enabling stability through the core. So that session is a lovely session. It's of course, 10 points if you guess the first movement. It is the D-handle pull down. We're then moving into a single arm horizontal row. Now the gym I'm gonna do this at has a beloved plate loaded single arm row. So I'll be able to get in amongst that. And what I'm looking forward to as well with training at different places is that like novel stimulus as well, that little, little change in contraction. I feel like you know my body will really benefit from that as well. And then we're into an overhand grip rope. So they have like a T-bar station there. So I'm able to get and get onto that. And then we're into a low row. So if we look at it, plain as day, pulling down with the lat, pulling in, pulling around. My objective for me in those movements is keeping the upper back out of the way. Just really trying to develop that taper and bringing in that lower lat. That's one area I definitely need to be focusing on. And then we're into that low row, which is just all the force through the upper back, through the traps. So for me, that's a stronger point. So I'm not having to put too much volume into there. But again, this gym's got a lovely low row machine. So we're all good. Now, as we know, for me, the arms continue to need to come up. So there's a lot of arm work still in here. We've got cross body tricep extension, elbow elevator curl, and then a sprinkling of rear delts to finish. And then we're into legs. So the legs is just like an absolute all rounder. It's, you know, similar to the one before. We want to tick all the boxes in terms of obviously every part of the leg, quads, hams, glutes, calves, adductors, all taken care of. We do kick things off with abs. We're going to be keeping those in. We then got hamstring curl, a squat pattern, a banded leg press, split squat, glute focus, another ham curl, adductor and calves mission complete. So that session is a bit of a beast to be fair. So now I've got to think, right, I'm going to be pretty smoked, going to be a bit tired. So I've got to take that into account when it comes to that push B session. I think quite fortunately for me, my leg doms kind of kick in like 24 hours after. I don't know if anyone else is the same. So I can kind of get the push session in before that starts to happen. <laughs> so the push B session, we run through that. We're into a high incline clavicular fly, the goat, horizontal press, which we're targeting on more like the lower fibers of the chest. And then to take care of the rest of the chest, it'd be a slight incline banded press. We then got delts in there. Crucifix lateral raise, my preferred weapon of choice for delt development. And then again, it's arms. So cross body tricep extension, elbow elevator curl, overhead tricep extension, behind the back curl, six sets in total of those, eight sets in total of those. So it is a one pin split to be fair. So now I'm like, okay, three days on. And today is the first day I've gone into that back A session, which we'll run through now. And it felt all right to be fair, I got through it. This is where it's gonna be really like that trial and error. Once I'm a couple of weeks in, I'll get a real idea. I'm still sort of baselining numbers a little bit, but fingers crossed, we strap ourselves in for the ride. So into the, the back A session per se, so D hand and pull down. We've got a barbell row in there. So hip hinge of choice, I'm still trying to develop the posterior chain. Obviously a hip hinge, whether it's an RDL, stiff leg or barbell row, is gonna bring up your back shots, whether it's for bodybuilding or men's physique, there's no doubt. But I didn't want something which can be too tax on nervous system, like a massive RDL, bearing in mind obviously the split itself. So that is the rationale for the barbell row. Ticking the box of that overall posterior engagement throughout intention, but the load that I'd be lifting, hopefully will just keep the CNS in check and Good to go. So that ticks the box for us, obviously rowing in this direction as well. And then we have a vertical grip seal row, which I'm not putting too much emphasis on the upper back. I'm still kind of keeping it mid back. And then into a pullover. So I'm having to take into account, you know, fourth day in a row, 
I could go over horizontal single arm, but I think that'd be a little bit too taxing. So I'm gonna make the most out of an isolation movement there instead, and still tick the box in terms of just trying to pull in and develop that lower lat as much as I can. Yes, that's what I need to focus on. And then you guessed it, biceps, six sets total. Short range challenge, elevated elbow, seated hammer curl to be bringing up across here, forearm, middle of the arm, where I'm lacking drastically and then behind the back curl. And then we're into the last session. I'm sure you're tired just hearing this at this stage of the game, as am I going to be tomorrow when I finish this split probably for the first time. So push A is a little bit more of a delt focus session. Now delts are definitely my stronger point, but you can never have too big a delts in men's physique. And in terms of my taper, for me, I'd say waist isn't too bad, but it's not, it's by no means like a strong point. Maybe it'll be better as I get leaner and, and go through those preps and better ab control, more discipline through my posing, for example. But if there's one thing I can control in terms of my physique is the bigger the delts, the better the tape is going to appear. So I may as well continue to exaggerate that. And I do have responsive delts as well, for sure. So crucifix lateral raise first, overhead press, and then into an incline press, so kind of more like upper chest, front delt bias press. Um, and then into horizontal raise. And then it's two exercises of triceps and then a slither of rear delts. So if we look at the total volume, so for me, volume is based on work and sets to failure. So bear that in mind as well. So for the chest over seven days, we've got 12 working sets. For back, we have 16. For delts, we have 12. And then plus six if you include rear delts, of course. So in total, that's actually 18. Biceps, 15. Triceps, 16. Quads, six. Hamstrings, four. And if you include the barbell row, then that would make it six. And so generally speaking, when it comes to like looking at work and set volume from a like a moderate standpoint, if I was to consider moderate volume for chest, it'd probably be like eight to 10. So it's tapered up a little bit. Same with delts, probably more like eight. So I've ramped it right up. For your back, I would say moderate is more like 12 to 14. So it's not really much of a stretch. Obviously with your back, you've got to consider so many more patterns. So you're always gonna have a little bit more volume in the back. Um, quads, six, six to four to six for quads and hams, I'd consider it like maintenance volume. So that's really where you're not necessarily having a focus point of it. You could kind of probably expect them to perhaps maintain in size, but that was all I was doing previously and they have grown and they've improved. So kind of a little bit of luck of the draw with that, where I'm confident that at the very least they'll maintain, but I'm actually confident they'll make improvements with that such low volume. I think that's just credit to the fact that I used to literally only train legs and never train arms. And now here I am 10 years later, having to bloody do the opposite. In terms of expenditure, 8,000 steps is like the baseline. I can comfortably manage and it's a good amount. Cardio will be at five times 20 minutes, which I'll do post-workout. Cardiovascular health, actual fitness as well, um, and obviously managing calorie balance. So to conclude, what I'm hoping to see is when we compare these front men's physique shots, is that it looks incredibly different. Fuller chest, bigger delts, better waist, and more importantly, as you guessed it, bigger bloody arms. So there we go, that is the run through. If you did have any questions about the split, about the volume, let us know. Obviously, like I said, it's by far not the most optimal, but it aligns with what I need to prioritize. And for me, coaching on a Wednesday and a Thursday is my biggest day of check-ins. And so that is something in which I'm more than happy to accept. And it's a different challenge. It will provide me a different perspective on things. It will see actually, can this be done? And it's a challenge in itself. So let's just see how we go. This is the beauty of bodybuilding. You give things a go, you make changes where you need to, but I'm pretty confident I'll have it nailed in. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.